you guys, how's it going? It's Shani today here, and welcome to me half moved into my new office. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be kind of like perfected, and things need to be added, and the bookshelves aren't exactly kind of nicely laid out or anything at the moment. Poor Charmander's head is being chopped off, but it's a work in progress, and I did say that over December the, the background is going to change, like, a lot. So this is one of the many changes, but I wanted to jump in today and show you today's video. So welcome to the third day of December. I hope you're having an amazing one. And let's jump into today's video with the ultimate building hack I think you need in your games. So whether you clicked on the title because it's just a video that I've uploaded, or because this is a building hack that you think you need, or you've googled this particular building hack, but I've brought you over to my current 100 baby house that we're doing for my 100 baby challenge. And probably one of the best things about this house is the fact that as much as it's a normal regular size house, it still registers as a micro home. And you must be wondering, Shani, how did you do that? We are covering the tiny living build hack for you today. I have found it super, super useful in my 100 baby challenges and let's jump into it. And what I say by this house is a regular size house, it is, but it also allows me to have all of the benefits of living in a micro home. So if you don't have tiny living installed, basically the gist of what you need to understand is how you see here at the top, you place 32 of 32 tiles for this tier. There are different tiers when it comes to tiny living. So there are three tiers to tiny living. There's a micro home, a tiny home, and a small home. Each have their own perks. But obviously, Micro Home has the most. You must be wondering, but Shani, how, how have you made 32 tiles out of 32 where your house is definitely not only 32 tiles? So we've jumped into build mode, we've jumped into buy mode, and now we want to go about starting our tiny home. So obviously, first of all, when The Sims or The Sims 4 registers you building, you're going to be building rooms. And that's basically how you construct your house out of various rooms and then when you select these you can select them as an entirety you can paint them in, in their entireties you can tile them and so on and so forth especially if you want to do platforms you want to do foundations it's always going to be about that room function well let's just show you how we can jump into taking this block and adding some extras and turning it into a tiny home so let's just add some extra surface area and then finally just a little bit of an entry atrium whatever coming out over there on that side now obviously this is a lot more than 32 tiles but we can make it think we can make the game think that this is still a micro home so if we go in here and we go to residential you're going to want to change it to tiny home residential and that'll bring up your extra uh that'll bring up your extra settings so obviously currently we we fit the definition to make a small home so we will still get light on the load and feeling fine all the time but we don't want that we want the whole full house worth of micro home tiny living tier vibes right we want to fit into 32 tiles so currently our house takes up 100 tiles that's fine or 87 out of 100 what we're going to do is we're going to remove floor remove floor remove floor does that do anything no unfortunately not let's undo that if we grab the sledgehammer tool and we get rid of each of these walls or one of each wall that still doesn't do anything it's still 87 tiles however if we go ahead and we remove the tiles now and it makes it not read as a room voila we're currently we don't even have four tiles currently so if we go back and we just keep this room here it still reads as we've got our 32 tile tier home micro home with all of the advantages but shiny this is open. This is, the, I can't place a roof on this. I can't place anything on this. I can't, that, that's still out in the wilderness. There's no roof. I can't add a roof. The only place I can really add a roof is over here on the side because that's where it registers. And to be fair, yes, I understand that. And I understand your frustration. So I'll jump into roofing in a bit, but let's get started on how do we close this off to make it still look like a house? Because if you jump in here and you're just going to close this wall off, that's gonna go back to being more tiles, right? That goes back to still being a room. However, there is a way to treat the, check the system. So let's just move that out the way. And you're gonna place one single lonesome wall over here on its own. And that's cool and all, but if you grab it and you move this and you place it in your missing gap, voila, you have a closed little box. And we're gonna do that again. And we're gonna place our little wall. We're going to move that on over and we're going to place it there. 
still the same thing. This will now read as one single individual wall. Finally, we want to close this considering that this still reads as a room. We could just go ahead and close that because that doesn't really affect us. It, the only thing that it will really affect is the lighting because this still reads as a normal room. So how The Sims reads things now is obviously if you were to edit or move things around and you want to select a room, you'll just click it like that. However, the fact that there's no floor here and the fact that this isn't been built as a room, you unfortunately have to edit these individually. So they're individual walls, you can't move them around. So basically, make sure that you're sure of your options when you're placing rooms and you're doing this type of build hack because you can't just pick up and decide that, okay, we're moving this to the side of the house instead. Because then, unfortunately, look at here, you're missing two of the wall pieces. No worries, your build trick has got you covered for that. We're going to move this on over. Voila! One single long wall and still reads as a closed box. However, roofing, still an issue, still a problem. We're only able to really put roofing over on this side. I have two solutions for you with this case. Firstly, you're going to want to place your roofing over and across and you want to want to make it spread over so that it covers the entire build. And then you're just going to want to tweak it so that it fits the room that you're trying to cover with the roof, but you're actually really not. So let us go over over here. There we go. So there's one roof. And then we're going to grab our second one. We're going to want to start from the starting point again. We're going to spread it across all of our roofs, or of, of our walls. Close this one over so that it lines up with the rest of the house. And then we just close that on over. Fantastic. We still have eight of 32. And now finally, you can come in with your final little roof tool over here. And you can roof that just like normal. That's the first solution. Don't mind how ugly the house looks and don't mind how ugly the roof looks. This is purely for ex ex explanation purposes. <laughs> so that's the first way to do it, is you do have one area where you can place a roof on the second story. And if you're wondering why I very specifically needed it to place it over here, because if you grab a roofing tool and you try and place it over above this, it doesn't read it as a room or it doesn't read it as a ceiling for you to be able to place. So you're gonna unfortunately be placing roofing where you wanna place tiling. Whereas if you place it up here, it reads it as the second story. So that's the first solution to your roofing conundrum. Whereas the second solution, if we just quickly retrace these walls, and I'm just going to basically place this so that it now reads as, okay, there's 52 tiles of 64. So we're currently on tiny home. And then this will push us over into small home. Ta -da! We're on 87 of 100 once more. Let me just grab a sledgehammer and do that. This is probably how I would recommend you do start this when you do start working around with these hacks. Because now you can place roofs as an if to your heart's desire. So we can place the roofs over and above on the ceiling like you normally do. Nothing different to see here. This is just us being a normal everyday Sims player. We're going to place a roof over here. Have it look the way that we want it to. Obviously ignore me just being weird and extra with the roofs. We're kind of just trying to get the point across, right? And then cover this one over finally like this oh. yeah. Ta -da! simple plain easy to remember but now shiny that's still reading is 87 don't worry that trick that i taught you a little bit earlier you can still go ahead and do that remove the floor here remove the floor here put the walls up grab your sledgehammer tool click one of those out click one of those out boom bam bomb your bobs and uncle and you can grab this we're going to copy this instead this time rather than just moving it there's the first wall done and there's the second wall that still reads as boxes but you've also got your roofing already sorted out this is when you're doing more complex builds and you're not just able to click and drag roofing across like previously like i showed you so that's your second option for roofing i'm kind of over that roof at the moment though so we're just going to come ahead and we're going to drag that on over and we can add a little pillar there if we really wanted to but that is the options for when you're creating a tiny home but now shiny what are the disadvantages of working with a, a room like this apart from it not being able to select as a room sure i can take you through all of those if i just remove the grid quickly apart from not being able to select a room like this make it taller make it longer make it shorter whatever the case is however you want it to read let's just still make this a micro home though 24 of 32 tiles excellent but unfortunately, we lost two of our walls there. So don't forget, you're going to click and drag. You're going to pick this up. You're going to move that on over and you're going to close that wall. So firstly, when you're trying to move and reshape 
rooms while you're still in the building process or you're still busy in the layout process of your floor plan you can't click these you can't affect these nothing of nothing about this is going to be able to be edited very easily so now i want to make this room bigger sometimes unfortunately that's not going to be the case so you physically have to move individual walls and then this make make that one longer but now suddenly whoops it's read that as a room again have to undo and you're gonna have to place walls within there so that is the first thing it becomes tedious when trying to edit things as you go so other than so when you're not able to click and drag anymore just to make walls bigger or smaller you can't really try and change and morph it requires a lot more pt for you to actually physically move walls move them into place and then add your little sneaky extra little bits the other thing and this might just affect some of you depending it doesn't really bother me so much but it, i know it bothers other players so if we have a look let's change this to nighttime quickly so i can add some lighting go to lighting let's go to ceiling lights and we love our little spaceship saucer thing we're going to have one light one light one light cool beans that reads perfectly fine right go back into pie mode let's grab some wallpaper let's grab something super vibrant so that you'll be able to see the difference that reads fine but of course now you can't shift place either you can only shift place on specific walls and that's going to shift place on both sides so unfortunately you're going to have to use your alt place so you can only place on one side of the wall so click, press alt tap that in rather than pressing shift because shift if i hold shift in there it's going to paint the entire wall however i press alt also going to paint the entire wall but it won't paint it on this side so it will only paint the one half rather than the full whole makes sense should make sense paint all of those walls fantastic looking delicious as always and then we're going to grab some of these and now we need to alt place because unfortunately this is going to have to not cover our beautiful pink walls inside so sometimes you have to place them individually sorry wall be okay though i promise mind me i'm just painting walls cool and there shouldn't be anything painted on the inside excellent fantastic love your work shawnee absolute stellar designs stellar absolutely incredible let me just grab something that this will be able to show up quite viv quite vividly i'm gonna grab these tiles and then once again can't shift place to make this fill up an entire room so you're going to have to click and drag can't just place alt either alt's not gonna do anything you're just going to have to click and drag but shiny why is that why is that color different it's the same tile but why is it different and that is because your game is going to start reading differently your game is going to read these textures and patterns differently in different light how these rooms work that aren't actually rooms that are are tweaked and building hacked rooms they read as in the shade but not indoors closed within a room so this is the true color this is exactly what this tile should look like but unfortunately this is what that tile looks like in the shade under lighting if we switch to middle of the day you're gonna have the same effect this is what the actual true color of that tile is what it's supposed to represent and you can see just between the two of those if we zoom in really close those look like two different color tiles but in hindsight they are actually the identical tile if i grab this and i place it out here of course that's in direct sunlight but if we add a tree place a whole bunch and we add a tree and we bring the tree in and we add some shade well what did you know it look what color that is it's the same as there it's not the same as in there because there's no shade getting cast there because the shadow is not going through the wall however this is reading a shade hopefully that makes sense so your textures aren't going to look the same your colors aren't going to look entirely the same but is it worth it for your tiny living building like benefits i personally think it's worth it but if you are a builder who is very particular on what the color of your tiles looks like during the day i don't know it might might be something for you to look into there's also some weird gameplay glitches where the sims will try and run inside from outside uh when there's a thunderstorm particularly with seasons uh and it will they will very specifically run indoors into this room here from my experience 
but it's very much of a muchness. Rain won't affect anything that's covered underneath the roof. I know it still reads as a house because I play in this house the entire time. Not the specific house, the house I showed you earlier on in the video. But that's the gist of the gist. Let me know in the comments below if you've made use of this hack already or if you've learned something new today. If you've got some amazing builds that make use of this tiny hack, please drop your gallery name in the comment section below. I'd love to check some of them out. But anyways, that's going to be the video. I hope you enjoyed short, sweet, to the point. And as always, friends, if you enjoyed, make sure to give that like, subscribe if you're new around here. Remember that we're all human differently and I'll see you guys again soon. So, so.